session I'm playing for you right now is a C, an F, and a G chord. And I've got it going on here in the background as a loop. So I, I want to talk to you a little bit about it. What it is is a C chord, which is the one chord in the key of C. That means it's the first chord in that diagram that you're looking at on page 58 in the book. And the next chord is the F chord, which is the four chord in the key of C. And then the next chord is the G chord, which is the five chord in the key of C. Now chord progressions are very common in music. And when we know that a chord progression comes from a certain key, then we also know what scale goes with that key. Here's a C major scale being played over that chord progression. So that's just a C major scale being played while the C, the F, and the G go by. And one of the things that is a dead giveaway that this chord progression is in the key of C is not the C chord as much as the F and the G chord. Because the F and the G chord are on two major triads a whole step apart. And when you see that in a song, whether there's a C there or not, you know for that moment over those two chords you're in the key of C because only the four chord and the five chord in all the keys are major chords a whole step apart. I'm just going to keep playing C major scale over this so you can hear what that sounds like. page 59 we have the same chord progression but in a different key. Now let's take a look at how that works. This C, F, and G are the 1, the 4, and the 5 chord in the key of C. But what if we wanted to play that same chord progression in a different key? Now if you'll look at the line where it says key of G, which is the second line on page 58, and you look at the 1 chord, well the 1 chord is G, the four chord is C, and then the five chord is D. So now we've got the same chord progression, but we're in a different key. So let's hear what that sounds like. So there we go. We've taken the chord progression and we've transposed it. We've moved it to another key. Now we could do that um, with bar chords, which is pretty cool. Let's do that with the bar chords for an F chord. And then the four chord in the key of F, if you look on your chart, key of F, line, and then go across to where the four is, you'll see that that's B flat, which I'm going to play as this bar chord, the root on the fifth string. So the F has the root on the sixth string, the B flat has the root on the fifth string. And then I can just take that and move it up a whole step since it's a four chord and get to the five chord, which will be my C chord played as a bar chord this time. So here's F to B flat to C. Same chord progression. Now the cool thing about bar chords is they are completely movable. Since there are no open notes being played, if I wanted to put this in the key of B, all I'd have to do is find a B note on this string, and we can do this by going E, F, G, A, B. So here's my B note. And then to do my four chord, I do the same thing that I did when I went from F to B flat. I just go straight across. A fourth up, right? One, two, three, four. And then my whole step to get to the five chord. So. again. So this now becomes a movable shape. The three chords in the chord progression can be moved anywhere. So let's say I wanted to play this in the book. I think we have A next. Yeah, here's A. The shape is the same. Here's G. This chord progression works for Twist and Shout, uh, La Bamba, um, Louie Louie is basically the same thing in Wild Thing. Uh, Good Lovin' is the same chord progression.
differences, it goes back to the four chord before it goes back to the one. So that's what a chord progression is and that's how a chord progression works. Chord progressions as a songwriter are best kind of realized as you're writing a song it's best realized by repeating a chord progression. It's the repetition that audiences want to hear and hang on to. And sometimes you can play a chord progression and then just change the last chord the second time and the chord progression sounds fresh. So let's do that. Let's, um, this isn't in the book. I'm just going to play this. I'm just going to go G, C, D. And then the second time I'm going to go G, C, D, E minor. that little change every other time made the chord progression sound a little fresh. Now, check it out. Here's the way I played that minor chord. I just took my bar chord form for G and I moved all of my fingers over one set of strings. So now my first finger is on the fifth string and all my other fingers have moved over as well. So third finger on the fourth string, a little finger on the third string, second finger on the second string, and that gives me a minor chord form with the root here on the fifth string. So these are useful chord form patterns that you can shift around. These are the main four chords that you, you need to know in terms of playing bar chords. And that would be G, and then G minor. And you can play G minor just by lifting this finger. And then C, and this is with the root now on the fifth string, and then C minor, and that's the form that I just showed you for E minor. So the C minor form looks just like the G form, but it's moved over a set of strings. Every finger is moved over a set of strings. Now all the chords on the next page, on page 60, all those chord progressions can be played by just using those forms. Just your major form with the root on the sixth string, minor form root on the sixth string, major form root on the fifth string, minor form root on the fifth string. You just need to know the names of the roots up and down those two strings. Okay, well let's talk about the capo. The capo is a kind of unique device for guitar players because it is a way of transposing a song by not having to change the shape of the chord that you're playing, but by moving the nut, basically, on the neck. Now you can't grab this and just yank it and pull it around anywhere, but you can do that with the capo. This is a capo right here. This is probably the most commonly used capo. Um, I use these guys some. Uh, the one I really use most of the time is this little guy. It's called the glider capo. It's pretty, pretty cool and very unique. Um, I'll show you how both of them work. Uh, this guy, as you can see, is very springy and I can just take it and put it on the guitar like this directly. And you always try to put the capo up as close to the fret as you can because that will keep your chords in tune a little better. So here's a C sharp chord now. And here's how I got a C sharp out of that because when you look at that, that looks like a C chord, right? So here's the deal. This becomes the nut of the guitar. So there's the nut, right? It's basically like I'm taking the nut and I'm moving it up one fret. So here's a C chord. If I wanted to move that chord up a fret, I would have to bar here and then use my other fingers to form the C. So there's C and then there's C like that. Now that's impractical some of the time. So what you would do instead is you would put the capo here on the first fret and then you'd play your C like this. Now, these are handy dandy little tools to have around. Uh, most people keep them up here on their guitar. Uh, I want to show you this guy. The glider capo is pretty cool. What I can do with this is I can actually keep it on the neck. So I'll put it like right here, right behind the nut. And so here's my C chord. Now when I want to play a C sharp, I just roll this guy up here to the first fret. And there's my C sharp. So this guy is easy to move around. Now it's on D. Now it's on D sharp or E flat. Right, so I can just slide this around and move it anywhere I want to. And the convenience of a capo, uh, you know, it's hard to 
hard to kind of put a value on it when you first start playing because if you're playing with a band and they want to put a song in a key where it has maybe a, a lot of bar chords it's difficult for a beginner to be able to catch on to that quickly but if you can use a capo you can play in a couple of keys then you're in pretty good shape I would say C and G are the two most common keys that you need to know in the beginning um, particularly G because with G you can get my playing a whole song without having to play a bar chord in it at all. So here's, um, let's go back to uh, open position. I'm just going to take this off just for a second here, it, just so I can play the G and you can see things a little bit better. So here's G, right, and then A minor, and then I can play B minor like this without having to play it as a bar chord, then C, and then D, and then E minor, and then D over F sharp. And then I'm back to G. So with that, I don't have to play any bar chords. The problem with C is you'll come across the F chord. Now, I want you guys to understand it's very important to learn to play bar chords. But in the beginning, sometimes it'll take you a month or so to get to the point where you have enough strength in your hand just to play your first F chord. So in those days when you're first learning to play, get a capo and that way you can learn to play in other keys and move things around. For instance, in the book, I've got a chord progression here where the chord progression goes C, D minor, G, and then A minor, D minor, G, and back to C. Now, if I needed to move that up to the key of D, all I would have to do is put my capo on. I'm going to put the glider on here real quick. Right here at the second fret. And like I said, try to nudge it up as close to the fret as you can uh, so that it's not bumping into the way of your hand. And now I'm going to play those same chords C, D minor, G, A minor, D minor, G, and C. Now this is actually sounding like D, E minor, A, B minor, E minor, A, and D. So see, I've gotten away without having to play that B minor bar chord. So it's very useful. And it can also be used for more advanced guitar players too. Like if I have an open string kind of lick, like let's take, um, I'll take this little guy right here. So that's a little G lick that I'm playing in open position. But what if I was playing in a band and they needed to do the song in the key of A? Then I could just move my capo up. So now I'm in the key of A. Now, that is a great benefit for an advanced player because there was no way I could reach back and forth and play those open notes like I was just doing. So capos can be used by beginners and advanced guitar players. Don't think of them just because you see a guy using, <laughs> using a capo. There are great players out there using capos doing amazing things. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for coming along and I hope you're enjoying the journey here as we go through the book Guitar Landscapes.